The beautiful game is taking over the six this week. Toronto is all about MLS Cup. Check out the skills from the big man around the world. Raptors, Pascal Siakam, we'll see you later, man. Welcome to MLS Cup Central here in the MLS Digital Studios. I am Andrew Wiebe. This is night two of the big shows leading up to the big game. MLS Cup on Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, Unimas in the United States, in Canada, north of the border, TSN and TVA Sports. The pregame show, by the way, starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on TSN. If you want to get it started even earlier, I know you do. 3 p.m. right here, MLS Cup Central. Ike Opara and Dax McCarty will be with myself and Matt Doyle to break it all down. We'll be pregame. We'll be postgame uh, on Saturday and on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, as we lead in to what will decide the champion of the 2017 MLS Cup season. Of course, if you want to be a part of the show, go to MLSsoccer.com slash playoffs. Give us your question, your query. You can be entered to win a game ball, an MLS game ball. That is going to be nice when you show up to pick up. Of course, I'm surrounded by an all-star cast, a best 11 cast in some cases. And the man to my left needs no introduction. Diego Valeri, the Landon Donovan most valuable player. Diego, congrats and welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. And I'm going to sit down the best players on both teams. Who are they? Who are you watching in this game from Toronto and Seattle? 100% I'll be watching for Lodero because he's my role and, and he's having a great time uh, at the end of the season. And uh, for Victor Vasquez in Toronto, he's, uh, he's been outstanding in, in the last stretch of the, of the season, too. The playmaker fraternity, yeah. The number yeah. 10, huh? Mm -hmm. Got to stick yeah. with what you I know, have right? Learn. I have yeah, to learn. Yeah. You always learn. These guys could uh, change the game. Julian Gressel sitting to my right here, the AT&T Rookie of the Year. Congratulations on a great season, Julian. He covered the vets, the guys that have been doing it for a long time, the guys with responsibility on their shoulders. But there's some young players in this game that could change the tide. Who are they? Well, for Seattle, I think it's, it's Christian Roldan, you know, a guy that has played uh, played almost every minute of every game this year, that has been a, played a huge part for Seattle um, all throughout the season. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him, definitely. And uh, for Toronto, I think it's Marky Delgado, you know, a guy that has kind of been in the shadows a little bit. I mean, just look at the names around him, you know. It's, that's, that's really all you got to look at. But I think he's, he's an important piece for them as well to kind of connect the midfield, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Number 10s, central midfield players. I guess we're sticking with a the theme here. Tim Melia, the uh, All-State Goalkeeper of the Year. We'll talk to you in just a little bit, Tim, about PKs. You'll lend us your expertise there. And, of course, Matt Doyle, the armchair analyst, will bring us in to the tactical side of this matchup. Uh, just to remind you, though, you can be a part of the show, MLSsoccer.com slash playoffs. Get your questions in. Get your hot takes in. Get your comments in. If you do, you will be eligible to win an official MLS match ball from 2017 or a replica. We've got four to give away every single night on MLS Cup Central, and I've got the winners from night one coming up in just a little bit. Let's get in some fan questions now. James Zubovitz is the first guy to get eligible for this. He asks, how would you commemorate winning MLS Cup? Forbidden tattoo, forbidden food, vacation destination. <laughs> I'm looking around here. Let's see. None of us have won MLS Cup, but this man, what'd you do? Where's the tattoo? Where'd you put it? I don't have a tattoo. I, have a tattoo. <laughs> I celebrated with my family and uh, obviously that parade in Portland, you know, uh, in the city, celebrating with our people. Uh, it was it was amazing. I, I think it was the right celebration. There you go. Full Pepe and Shoots Trophy. Getting all the attention in this one. Julian, Tim, this is where you want to be. This is what you want to have as your season ends. A celebration, a bus, a party. What does it mean to you when you see something like that? How does that motivate you? Uh, it's a huge motivation. It's what, you, it's what we do this. We want to win. We want to win trophies. And I think uh, we've had some disappointing results in our playoffs the past few years. And I think it's really important for us to give something back to the fans and get them one of these trophies. I mean, the, the fans in Atlanta, to be honest with you, they deserve one of those parades. Y year one deserve? Yeah. I mean, oh, they've man. been so incredible. <laughs> um, they've, they've kind of taken this whole thing to another level. I mean, Where would the party be in Atlanta, though? There's so many spots. I like think afterwards, <laughs> though, at the club? Like, where can fans <laughs> find you that, in Russell? Oh, man, that, there's enough spots. I yeah, hip-hop yeah. special, yes. Yeah. Got some uh, rappers showing up for that one. Patrick Miller also hit us up. He says, hey, Playoff Central, do you think Seattle will register a shot on goal this time around? All for one, Doyle, yes. The answer is yes. Yeah, they're, they're going to. It's still going to be a tight game, but it's not going to be what it was last year when I thought it was pretty one-sided from the run of play. Both these teams had a lot of attacking talent last year, and they brought in more this offseason. Yep, two teams that can certainly threaten goal. I expect a much more exciting game. And we've got two of our favorites 
out in Toronto, hanging out, experiencing the parties, hanging out with the big timers. Our friends from this week in MLS, Kaylin Carr and Susanna Collins. Guys, what's up? Those 20 ounce pints are delicious. I am sure of it. You've been talking to fans here. How do the locals feel ahead of this big game? We have, we be, we've been kind of taking the temperature um, of the fans here. And I have to say, um, speaking to some members of, of Kings of the North, that's one of the TFC's um, supporters group, I would say quiet confidence is how I would describe how they're feeling. You spoke to them as well, Kaylin. What would what, your takeaway? Well, you talk to people within the club, they talk about trust the process. And uh, you have to remember this club was one of the worst teams in MLS for a long time, starting in 2007. Uh, didn't make the playoffs until 2015, had an early exit 3-0 loss away to Montreal so in a lot of ways you talk to the fans Kings of the North talked about that Montreal series getting over that hump yeah. now MLS Cup proved <laughs> to be too big for them last year but hey now they have the opportunity in front of them and you're right Susanna you do see uh, a new confidence in this group knowing they've been there before and of course uh, the all-time best record for the regular season supporter shield exactly Canadian Cup yeah help. one of them even said to me that you know this year they they, they're a lot calmer than they were at this time leading up to the game. At least that's what they're year. saying. At least that's what they're saying. Yeah. But then he did say, talk to me on Saturday morning. Right. I'm sure it'll be a different story, Weeby. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe them. I think there's nervousness buried deep <laughs> inside. On the outside, parkas, everything else. It's cold, but you guys got inside today. You hung out with the Raptors. Well, exactly. We did hang out with the Raptors today. We had uh, we, we braved uh, braved the elements inside their training facility, and um, and it was great. Um, we got a, a chance to talk to them and and get a sense of you know sort of the mutual respect between these two teams it was very cool. Yeah, no, they talked about Altidore and uh, these guys coming, but then also uh, they get a lot of support too. So there's yeah. a real community here of the pro teams. We will see what happens. We'll have this more game. on that later oh. in the show. Weeby, we'll send it to you. Thank you so much, Susanna. We will be back with them in just a second. Jillian Sakovitz and David Goss are on the ground in Toronto covering the Seattle Sounders and Toronto FC for us this week. Jillian filed this report earlier today. The Sounders arrived here this afternoon to get in their first training session here in Toronto. And of course, that included Jordan Morris, a guy who's been sidelined now for over two months with that hamstring injury. Should we see Jordan Morris on Saturday in the final? It'll almost certainly be in a spark plug substitution type of role. And that's a stark difference from last year's MLS Cup. But I got a chance to talk to Jordan, and he said that's a role he is willing to embrace. Yeah, obviously for me it's been a tough year with injury a couple months um, so just trying to come back in and and make an impact in any way that I can I think you know as my role is going to change a little bit last year was starting and this year if I come off the bench then um, just try and make an impact in, in any way that I can try and provide that spark because I think in a game like this sometimes like you saw last year it's not necessarily the prettiest game in the world and sometimes there needs to be that little change with someone coming in so hopefully um, if that's me, I just want to try and provide that and obviously help the team win in any way that I can. But. Brian Schmetzer told me obviously the game is going to dictate if we see Jordan Morris in the final on Saturday. If they get an early lead, maybe they won't need him. But he finished by saying, quote, I'd love to get him on the field because he's a great kid. Schmetzer also confirming today that we will not be seeing Ozzy Alonso in the final. He has been rolled out. Now I send it over to David Goss, who's got you covered on everything TFC. Two days to go until the big match. Toronto FC continuing preparations for MLS Cup. It was a light day of training here at the Kia Training Center. They started out in the bubble doing tactical work. We spoke to Drew Moore afterwards, and he said the fullbacks for Toronto FC have been a big part of their attack all year, but Seattle's very dangerous in transition. And so at times it's going to be Moore's job to hold Justin Moore as well as Beta Shore and Hasler back a little bit so that he always has that one extra defender to stop that Seattle attack. When Greg Vanny spoke about the same thing. He thought maybe there was a chance for Toronto FC to take advantage when Seattle has their attacking players maybe not committed fully defensively and sitting up high. That's when TFC can create some dangerous opportunities. The team then went outside, did some light ball work, a little bit of fitness, and yes, they practiced with that orange ball because it snows here in Toronto. Thank you so much, David. Am I the only one who's watching those training footage videos and just looking at Josie Altador's ankles for a support, a brace, a little bit of a gimp, something? Julian, you saw in the final game of the season how special he can be. So did Columbus Crew SC. If he can play in this game at full strength, how will that affect Toronto FC's chances of winning? 
Oh, I mean, he's you know he's done so much throughout his career in this season for them. I think I mean he's the guy that put him in in that final, you know, with that goal. So if he if he doesn't play, you'd lo you'd lose you'd lose quite a bit of quality up there. I'm um, a guy that can do so many different things, like set up Jovinko or set up the guys around him, create chances himself, and then just finish it off. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm hoping for Toronto that he, he's good to go. He uh, had that chance last year that Stefan Fry pot out of the top corner. Meanwhile, we got news from Jillian Diego that Ozzy Alonso will not play in this game. In years past, that would have been a huge blow. It's still a blow, but maybe not as much this time around. I agree. I agree. I think uh, Ozzy is a big loss, of course, but uh, Seattle uh, replaced, it really, replaced him really well with Svensson, Roldan, even Lodero playing on, on the D-mid, too. So uh, Seattle has been strong, and uh, besides uh, that, and obviously in the final, uh, being a final only one game, you want Aussie on the on the game because uh, he feels the jersey, he feels the colors, the club. So, but it would be a big loss. But uh, I think Seattle will replace you well. We'll, we'll see think. what happens in open play. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you here, but uh, PKs could also decide this in this game. We saw that in 2016. It's happened four times in MLS history. 06. New England, Houston, 09, RSL LA, 13, SKC, RSL, and of course last year, Bradley Morrow, tough moments, Roman Torres playing the hero. Tim, for a goalkeeper, when you head into a final and you've done this a few times with Sporting KC now, you got PKs, you've got an opportunity to play the hero. Do you like that moment? I personally enjoy that responsibility. Uh, it's an opportunity where I can control my own destiny. As a goalkeeper, you can't score many goals, so you can't help sure that you're going to win that game, but in a penalty scenario, you can. You can? The attackers, you, know, you don't feel that way? I really don't like it. Yeah, I wanted to you know, finish it on the 90 minutes, 120 minutes. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I really don't like it, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with Diego there. You know, we kind of were on the short side of it earlier in the playoffs this year, unfortunately. Um, but maybe if that went the other way, I would have been a little bit bigger advocate for it. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's 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 a you have to decide the game somehow. You have to decide who advances somehow, and if that's the case, then, then you know that's it. And, and I'm sure these guys have, have looked at it and thought about it now because it might, it might be the possibility at the end of the day. Seattle fans, obviously the ones hitting us up on Twitter, they all want to see Toronto fall again on PKs. I want to dig a little deeper though here, and I've got the two men for the job, I think. So I'm going to send you guys to the board. I want you to walk me through the three stages of a penalty kick, because there's a little bit of a cat and mouse game here, mind games, so to speak. Walk me through it. So phase one for me is done before you even start the game. You want to know every stat, where this guy's comfortable. Does he go to the left more? Does he go to the right more? And then you're trying to pick up cues right here. You know, when he's looking down at the ball, sometimes when they peek their head up, they're going to give you a little indication of which direction they're going. Sure. I mean, this time for me, I think it's all about the ball. Focus on the ball, place the ball well, and if it's a natural grass, you know, take a look of, of the surface, the grass, and test it a little bit if it's hard, and uh, that's it. Phase two is the showdown. This is where you can kind of start to play your mind games. Maybe you're moving laterally across your line, you're throwing an arm out, you're doing anything you can to try to disrupt the shooter from their rhythm. Yeah, in this moment I like to pretend a little bit, you know, to pretend that uh, you're going to kick in, in one way, you know, and uh, I, I like to open up the, the foot and show that maybe I will pick a side and then, uh, you know, go to the middle, so it's all about pretending. And then the fun part starts is when these guys get ready to take a shot. At this point, you should already have your mind up on where you're going to go. Um, some goalkeepers will tell you that the plant foot is a big indication of where they're going to shoot, which it is, but for me, for me personally, it's very difficult to see that his foot is going to shift this way in the last second. It's just a really, it's just a really hard uh, skill to accomplish. But I prefer to just pick the sides off my stats and then go that direction. Yeah, in this moment, I mean, uh, in a normal game, right, I like to change the rhythm. You know, the last couple of steps for me are important. The momentum, you know, to kick strong, it's important. And, and this time, a uh, shout out, I pick a side and, and kick as hard as you can. So look, there's a difference between PKs from the run of play and a shootout and how you prepare for them and how the momentum works and how confidence works. For you guys, going into a penalty shootout, momentum, confidence, how you know which, which way they're going to go, what changes? Tim, yeah. I'll start with you. Oh. Um, I think it's indicated more from is it a penalty during the game, you're using stats. If it's a shootout, it's more of what the previous shot happened. Did the goalie make the save? Did the shooter miss? Did he score? And then that pressure kind of culminates onto the individual shooter or the goalkeeper. 
Yeah, confidence is very important. It's very important because after 120 minutes, you're exhausted. So you don't have uh, clear your mind enough uh, to be precise. So uh, like I say, pick a side and kick it. By the way, come back over here. In the meantime, I'm going to show the folks something from earlier this year. That would be a matchup between these two men from the spot. Tim Melia got the better of it. He was jacked up like Chris Wondolowski levels of excited. Diego, you went down the middle. Why? Because like I, like I told before, I mean, I, I wanted to pretend that with my open foot, kick aside and, and, and obviously put it in the middle a, a little bit high. So he, he got me. <laughs> Um, for me, this, because he is such a good player, he's a talented player, he's capable of stopping, he goes a lot of different directions from, his, from my studies on him. Um, I just tried to disrupt him, I tried to get him to think that I was going to go early, and luckily I was able to stay in the middle and make the save. This uh, matchup here on PKs, yeah. you have a note on this map, because people got to remember. Uh, Toronto's had a catastrophic season on PKs. Josie's just 3 of 5, Javinko is just 1 of 3 on the season, and of course Vasquez missed one last week. If it goes to a shootout again, I think it's clear advantage for the Sounders. We will dive in on Saturday to more of that, but a fan question is in from Juan Garcia. What if, in the case of a draw, he says, the higher seed won MLS Cup, like Liga MX? More emphasis on regular season. We've talked about this over the course of the playoffs. Does this make sense in a final scenario, Doyle? It doesn't. I, I, I understand why they, they want to do it that way, and I do like the idea of emphasizing the, the regular season a little bit more, but we've already seen some good teams in Liga MX in the playoffs kind of play for a draw because they know that's all they need to go, and it's like the last thing you want to see in the playoffs. So I, I understand why they asked the question, but I don't think it's the right solution for us. Yep, got to win it in 90 or 120 in this case. Well, let's go back out to Toronto. Kaylin and Susanna hung out with the Raptors today. All right, just hanging out with Norman Powell of the Toronto Raptors. And Norman, um, you know, we were checking out some social media stuff. I know that you're a, you're a soccer fan. I've seen you at TFC Games. What is that fan experience like? What's it like sitting at BMO Field? Um, it's amazing. You know, it's a different atmosphere, a different feel. You know, everybody's into the game. You know, I really like the, the red smoke um, when they score. Uh, but it's definitely a different feel, you know, uh, to see uh, all the different sports teams in Toronto. So I'm just really excited. And, uh, I mean, there's a couple of guys that I know on the team, like Artidor and, and all those guys. And I watched Bradley before. So, like, I kind of know a little bit of guys. So it, it's good to see them win and stuff. I also saw you rocking a Javinko shirt. Mm -hmm. What do you like about his game? Um, I just like he's crafty. You know, um, he's a little undersized. You know, he got a, little, a lot of grit to him. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's aggressive. You know, and I like aggressive players, you know, that, that player to chip on his shoulder. And uh, he definitely has that, you know, being a leader of the team. What does that mean to you to know that, you know, there's sort of this mutual respect between between the two professional franchises and, and as athletes? Oh, it means a lot. It means a lot. It's great, you know, um, you know, like come see them support us like, you know, we do all the time. So it's just great for the city of Toronto. Predictions for the game on Saturday. How's it going to go down? Uh, I don't know. I want to make it difficult, but I feel like it's going to be easy. So we're going to win. I would say like 2-1. Two, two, and Toronto's going to win, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Like, that was the, that's not a question. Like, <laughs> you should even ask me that. Right? But, Can you read the shirt? Come hello, on. you got to represent. Hello. Hey, hey, hello. You for sure. <laughs> I mean, I was too nice to say 2-1. But I just want to be safe and say 2-1. Like, I wanted to say 3-0, but hey. Not lacking for confidence in Toronto. As you might expect, MLS media is descending on Ontario this week. Our own Jillian Sakovitz caught up with uh, Jeff Carlisle from ESPN. Jeff, at the press conference, we heard Clint Dempsey admit that he has a little bit more of an appreciation for the game. He enjoys it a little bit more, but he says, I always have. Is it still the same old Clint Dempsey? I think it is and it isn't. I, I mean, I think everything around the game, um, you know, the fact that, that Clint is still playing, I think that's something that he appreciates on a, on a much deeper level than maybe he did a year ago. Um, I think almost losing your career and, and, and one of your passions in life will, will do that to you. But in terms of how he is on the field, I think it's going to be the same old Clint. I mean, he's still ultra competitive. He still wants to win in the, and score goals in the worst way. Um, I do think there'll be a, a little undercurrent of, of added motivation because obviously he missed out last year on, on being able to, to be on the field and contribute to a, an MLS Cup victory. And uh, if he, he were able to do that on Saturday, I think it would be even more special for him. Toronto, Seattle, both teams obviously making it back here for the rematch. The idea that two teams can make it back to back, what does that say about the way that these teams go about building their rosters? Well, I think both teams have done an excellent job of building their core. I mean, you go right up the spine of each team and it's just filled with outstanding players, you know, and 
in Seattle, you've got Stephen Fry, and then the two center backs, Chad Marshall and Roman Torres, you know, Christian Roldan, you know, going right up the middle to Clint Dempsey. And, you know, obviously Nico Ladero is a big part of that as well. And then you look at Toronto and, um, you know, you've got Drew Moore, who's just a savvy veteran. And, and then you've got Michael Bradley, uh, Victor Vasquez, Giovinco, Altador. I mean, the, the list goes on. So I, I think it, it speaks well to the, to the core of each team. But you got to give the front offices a lot of credit. Um, they've been able to build even more depth, even more versatility into their roster. And I, I think that's a little bit easier now in the age of targeted allocation money. You know, teams have a little bit more money to play with. And so, um, you know, both front offices have done a really good job of augmenting their rosters and, and filling areas of need that, you know, at least in Toronto's case, caused them to fall a little bit short last year. I think Vasquez in particular has been a huge pickup for them and, and really has transformed their team to a degree. Jeff, thanks for the time. Hey, Guys, pleasure. back to you. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you, Jeff, for that information. He's talking Tam. He's talking Victor Vasquez. I'm talking tail of the tape with the MVP, Diego Valerio. We have Tim Melia last night give the edge to the goalkeeping side to Seattle. Stephen Fry's the veteran. I want you to take care of the attack for me. Start with Seattle. What makes it special? Who are the difference makers? I think uh, they are special because they are simple and they move all around uh, the field, all over the field and cover good spaces, uh, being very simple but very effective and a lot of talent, right? Uh, goal scoring, uh, Dempsey, Bruin, Lodeiro and Jones, using Jones. So they will have probably space to attack and it will, uh, it will be a good matchup for them. They know what they want to do and Clint Dempsey in the playoffs has been getting it done. Three goals. Nico Ladero can get it done as well. On the other side, Toronto, they got big names, and they got that Victor Vasquez guy who was a best 11 candidate with you. What do you see from the Reds? Sure. I mean, Victor Vasquez, Jovinko, can surprise Altidore, of course. But they have a better organization to attack, and probably they will create a, a lot of chances because uh, they, they need to do that, and they have been doing it. So uh, I think, you know, uh, the thing would be, they can they break uh, Seattle down with uh, combinations through the middle because uh, that would be very important for them and obviously being effective in the final being effective and this guy can do everything. Yeah, it's not all about open play though. Set pieces are going to play a part on Seattle side. Roman Torres, Chad Marshall in the box. We know they can get up and dunk. Tim, on the other side, Sebastian Jovinko is darn near automatic on free kicks. Look at this. Oh. Yeah, not a guy you want to line up against. Uh, he's so consistent. He puts it in a spot where even if you go a little early, you're not getting to it. It's really impressive just how he gets the ball up and down so quick. Slow-mo, Julian, you're not loving this view right now, huh? <laughs> no way. Top not. corner. <laughs> no chance. This could be the difference on Saturday. Yes, yes, I'm not crying about this. I am also going to force you to make a choice here, Diego. It's very, very difficult here. I, I got to make you do it, though. Who's getting the check mark? Seattle, Toronto, who's got the edge in the attack? I'll put a mark in Toronto. Uh, but because uh, they, they need they need to win. So it's a mark for Toronto. All right, you, do you really believe that, or is that just the Timbers in you talking? Oh, I man, uh, it, maybe it's a wish. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Check mark for Toronto. They get the advantage in this one. Uh, let's talk about the bench, though, because it's not all about the starting 11. Doyle, there's been MLS Cups past where guys have come off, changed the game, not just changed the game, won their team a championship. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a like long and storied tradition of exactly that. We saw uh, Matt Kanji do it for Colorado seven years ago in Toronto, of all places. And, of course, uh, 2005, I think it was Pando Ramirez coming off. For, uh, off the bench for LA to win that one. But this uh, this sub in particular, I mean, you, you see it right here. They got Kanji in isolation and they let him do something a little oh, bit. Oh, Jair Benitez, no. Yeah, he went nutmeg, tore his ACL and ended up scoring the goal. But the idea when you bring these guys in is to change the game. And I think both the, both teams uh, out there on Saturday have game changes that they can bring in. Ozzy Alonso being out hurts a little bit on the Seattle side, Julian. I'm going to make you give us a decision on this tale of the tape. Uh, what do you look at when you see Seattle's bench? Who are the difference makers that Brian Schmetzer could go to? Uh, we'll see if Ozzy Alonso's out. I'm not, oh, I'm not you think a, little, think a little yeah. Think a little trickiness, uh, huh? Yeah. Um, but no, I mean obviously you have Jordan Morris probably coming off the bench. You know, a guy that just gotten healthy again, coming back from injury. Definitely a difference maker. You know, he's been so 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 valuable for them, uh, not just this year but even last year. And, um, so he's one of the guys you look at, and uh, then you have Rodriguez probably coming off the bench. Um, Harry Ship who's played a lot of minutes, you know, so you got you got some you got some options. Those are some good options on the Toronto side. Greg Vanny can go to some guys who started this game last year. Exactly. Um, I mean, there's four, I think, right? Irvin, Hagland, 
uh, Osorio, Cooper. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's some good names on that bench. All right, give me a check mark. Um, Who's winning here? <laughs> Put it on the record, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Seattle is a little unfortunate with injuries, but uh, so I think Toronto has shown their depth all year. Um, so I'm going to give it to Toronto. Oh, two red check marks, one green check mark. Brian Schmetzer don't care. He says this is a side salad. We got this. 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, MLS Cup, the big game. Of course, uh, you're out there trying to win replica balls and match balls. Every time you go to MLSsoccer.com slash playoffs and enter a question, a comment, a hot take, you have a chance to be on the show. And our winners from last night are Sean Curry and Frank Garibay. Those are the replica balls, the authentic balls. Congratulations to Jared Kerr and Aaron Knowlton. You are going to be uh, the folks that everybody's looking at when pickup comes around. <laughs> Pump those things up. Don't lose them. They're special, special things. Ben Mailer hits us up. He says it's the 75th minute and the game is tied. Who do you bring in off the bench to win MLS Cup? I'm going to switch that around a little bit. I'm going to go straight to predictions with you guys. Who will win MLS Cup and who will be the most valuable player? Tim, I'm going to start with you. Who is going to be that guy? Who is going to win this game? Uh, it's going to be Toronto and I think the guy is going to be Jamaica. All right, that's simple enough. I agree. It's simple and uh, the same. Toronto, Shavingo. Guys? I'm going to switch it up a little. I think it's uh, Clint Dempsey's final. You know, he oh. didn't play last year. Obviously, came back from a really tough, tough injury. And, uh, yeah, Seattle's going to win. He's been the best player. One. He's yeah. been the best player in the in the playoffs. But I'm saving my prediction for Saturday. So, we'll see. I mean, oh. it, I mean, obviously, Dempsey wants the showcase moment for him at this point in his career. But Javinko as well, if he ends up winning an MLS Cup and winning MVP, he probably goes down as the best player in MLS history. Certainly the last three years, what, what he's done, we've never seen, in terms of raw productivity, we've never seen anything like it. All right, I'm going to go back to Ben's question real quick. And it's the 75th minute. Let's say the game is tied. What do you guys think makes the difference? Because I'm looking at this game, I'm thinking back to last year, MLS Cup's past. It's very cagey normally. It's not a game that's a 5-0, 3-0. It's not over at that point. So what makes the difference 75 minutes on? I'm going to go to the MLS Cup winner at the table. Tell me what you think here. What happens in those final 15, Diego? I mean, it's, it's the most important part of the game. And, uh, I mean, I think, like uh, Julian said, Toronto has more depth, more, more substitutions. And uh, probably, I mean, uh, I think a good substitute for Toronto on the attack could change the game because uh, – they they will they will create a lot of chances. But that's Stefan Fry's time, no? Right, Tim? That that's his time. He shines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But what are you going to go to him for the last 15 minutes? He won MLS Cup in 15 seconds. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It. That, that was over before it even started. He pushed it down their throats. Well, but, yeah, I mean, Brian Schmetzer has been a really good coach for, for Seattle for the last two years, but he's not a tinker. When he makes a sub, it tends to be a one-for-one. One. They stay in that 4-2-3-1. You know, you could go a little more attacking, bringing in someone like Rodriguez on at left wing, and then you push Jovan Jones back. But it's still pretty much the same thing, whereas Greg Vanny, he's more willing to change the shape and change where they're holding the ball and just sort of change the dynamics of the game. I thought he almost did it last year with Tosin Ricketts. Bringing Tosin Ricketts on for Javinko, subbing Javinko out, and I'm like, that took, you know, that took something from from Greg Vanny, and it was almost enough. So, I think in those last 15 minutes, I would watch for Vanny to try to change the game and put Seattle on their heels. We will see what happens. Of course, the big game coming up on Saturday. Congratulations though to Dawson Delk. I did not get you in there, man, but your question got asked. That's the MVP question. So you are in the running for that replica ball or authentic match ball. Congratulations, my man. Of course, everybody tune in on Saturday. That's what this is all about. It's all about the game on the field. MLS Cup, Toronto FC, Seattle Sounders. December 9th, 4 p.m. Eastern, ESPN and Unimas in the United States, TSN and TVA Sports up in Canada. The pregame on TSN, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. The pregame for us is at 3 o'clock, MLS Cup Central. And, of course, on Friday, special guests, more folks rolling in the studios. Defender of the Year, Ike Opara. Didn't win an award, but we still love him. Dax McCarty, Taylor Twelman will also join us from Toronto. And myself and Matt Doyle will lead things along. And then the pregame and postgame show will get you going. Thank you so much to everyone who asked questions, everyone who watched. Enjoy your Thursday night. We will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one.